Do people tell you you take life for granted? Are you just not satisfied with what you have? Do you want more? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about <laughs> how to be satisfied with enough, if that's even possible. <laughs> Wish I knew. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? Uh, what's up, Randy? Now, Danny, have you ever in your few years here on the planet ever been dissatisfied? Yes. <laughs> I think it's like, you know, I think that's, I mean, I think, okay, I think uh, Mill said it once. Like, I think there is there is something in dissatisfaction that's important where I think like dissatisfaction helps us realize what we can improve upon. And so like, it is an important facet of, you know, recognition where we see our world and we say, oh, I wish this was different or that could be different. It could be better. And then we can make those changes. So I think there's part of it that's really good because it's a way to see like how we can improve our lives, you know, maybe improve our world, whatever. But then there's the other side of it where, like, I think it's just there's like a hole that you're trying to fill that's unfillable. And Mm. that side of it is terrible because you just like there's never enough. Right. It's like that's like where people get in that loop of like, you know, consumerism is a good example. Right. You get the new phone and new one comes out three months later and you want to have that one. It's like you just got a new phone. Like, do you need that? phone? It's like this cycle just goes on and on and on. And I think that's where it gets really dangerous. Yeah, it's brutal because it's like it's like an empty void, and yeah. the more the more you cater to it, the emptier and the deeper <laughs> it gets. It's like yeah, now it, you need to fill it with more, and then it'll be it just like keeps I call making myself, room. <laughs> yeah, I caught myself today in the loop where I was not feeling good, and so I started coming up with all of these theories about what I would want to change because then I would feel good. And I'm and I stopped myself when I finally called myself and I was like, hang on, you have no guarantee that doing that will make you feel any better. Right now, you just feel like garbage. So let's just focus on feeling like garbage right now. And then yeah. the rest of it will take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Like I feel like I know I feel the same way. It is. It's like a hole that you can't fill. And like I've been I feel like that. It's so weird because I feel like I've been getting better at dealing with it. Like but then at the same time, like I go back and forth, you know, like. And definitely like, when I'm tired and stuff, it's always worse. Like at night and stuff, I'll be like, yeah, I got to keep work. I got to do this because I got, you know, blah, blah, blah. I got to get there and get this. And then like, you know, the next day, usually I have a better perspective on things. But it is difficult. It's like, and you know, it's hard to know. Like, I think it's just part two of like human life. We don't live in, a, you know, we don't live in small communities anymore where our possible experience of types of lives is limited. You know, we're like, you know, you have a black and a farm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like pretty straightforward. Now, I think it's a lot more complicated in that sense. And there's more opportunities to do things. And every choice you make, you know, you're making a choice about what you're going to do and spend a lot of time on. And there's always that fear that maybe there's another one that's slightly better, more right for you, more profitable, whatever, however you view it. And it's like, that's always there, right? <laughs> and so, it's, or you could always do add one more thing in there, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, it just gets to be too much. You know, it's you know, it's really interesting is that my relationship with the problem has not changed. Like if I look back through my life, through the problems that I had in high school or like when I was in university or after I graduated and, you know, he had huge student loan debts or even now and like all these things, the problems have changed. But my relationship to the problem has not changed because it's always been wherever I am is not good enough. And I need to do, I need to exert some effort to do something, to make something different. So then it'll be okay. And then once I get there, there's another thing right after it. I was thinking this the other day. I don't know if you, maybe, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll think the same way I did about it. Do you think this is because when we were younger in school and stuff, everybody told us, you just got to try hard and just do what you love and just get A's. And like that emphasis on like the goals sticks with us and it's really hard to cut. Yeah, that's I think it. that's definitely I think that's definitely a big part of it cuz I mean, I mean like all of the problems and all these things that I have I'm very fortunate they're like first world problems. You know, there's like yeah, a roof yeah. over my head, there's food yes. in my belly and it's like very very fortunate. But I I heard it said where there's like there's no hierarchy of suffering. So like even though they're first world problems, like it still causes me suffering. Or I yeah. still cause myself suffering because of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, sure, can't compare it with other things. But I definitely think that that, I mean, <clears throat> for me, I think that 
created a lot of the drive that I have where I have a hard time staying still. Yeah, right. It's like a difficult. That's my problem too. It's like a difficulty staying still. Even when like I, I, even when I try to take a day off where I'm sick or something, like I have a hard time stopping doing things, you know, like stopping myself from doing things, you know, and like, or like have a hard time, like you know, not having plans made already and stuff like that, and like just sitting. And I think that's important to just be able to sit down and just relax, or just like appreciate, also appreciate what you have, because I feel like when you're when you're just rushing through it, you don't you don't have a hard time appreciating like what you're actually doing and the journey, you know, and mm. focusing on goals is really not a good thing. I don't think you need to focus on what you're doing, you know, I like, I like what you said there with the journey. Um, <clears throat> and it kind of reminded me something that you were talking about, I think last week or the week before where like everybody has this idea that we're going to get to some place of happiness where it's like happily ever after yeah. never have a problem ever again. Yeah. Everything's great, but it's not. Like, it's just not as much as we want to be. It's just not. There's no happily ever after. But there is, like you're saying with the journey there, there can be a collection of these moments. And it it seems like maybe maybe the goal would be to look at me goal setting again once again. Right. Maybe the goal would be to collect as we many need of fucking these goals. moments. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it would be to collect as many of these moments where you're actually present and experiencing the moment. Because then that would kind of be a fulfilled life, right? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, right? I mean, you know, it's like that problem. I don't know. It's it's so hard. Because, like, I think we're all, yeah, here's another thing about it. I think we're also taught, to that we live in a world where there's not enough. And so we're fighting everybody else for stuff. That's at least, like, you know, consumers, U.S. teachings, right? And, like, that also is part of it, too. Because I think that you, there's this feeling, like, if I stop, I won't get all the stuff that's mine. Yeah, like I was kind of I know it's stupid, but like that feeling like and so that also puts pressure on us. I don't know, at least for myself. I I've been trying to do this thing recently and it's been very helpful where when I find myself getting in that like phase of feeling dissatisfied or like stressed and feeling I need to do more, like reminding myself that like I'm lucky I can do what I'm doing now and I wanted to do these things and I'm like grateful that I had that I had these problems because these are all things I wanted to do and I'm doing them now. So that's awesome. And like trying to like, I trying to, it helps me bring myself to the moment rather than like thinking of that future or thinking of like, you know, the stresses and that whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also, um, you know, it's like taking one day at a time. Okay. So a lot of, yeah. I, I cause myself so much suffering because <laughs> I'm trying to figure it all out today. I'm trying to get it all done today. And it's just like, you know, just this one day, like, can I make it until I go to sleep tonight? There's never been a day where there's even been a question about it. You know, like every day it's like, of course I can. But it's just like, then let me just back off. Let me be, have some compassion with myself and just like ease up. Well, you know, too, if you get through each day, you'll get to wherever you're going too. You don't need to worry about that. That's the other side of it, too, is like trying. I know it's hard, but like trying to stop worrying about that potential future that you can't plan for and don't know. You know, I mean, like, and it's it's tough because there's that like, I think there's like a there's a fine line between planning for the future in the sense of like, you know, making sure you have stuff in place so that, you know, you'll be OK if things happen and stuff versus like trying to plan the future. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like. Mm. I, mm -hmm. There is a difference. And I think we get caught up in, we, we shift that line over to planning for or planning rather than planning for. I, I heard something really interesting this week. They were talking about, so we talk a lot about values on here because that's like the way to live the good life. And they were talking about principles. And that's like the kind of the way to get stuff done over time. Like there are, at the end of every principle is a promise. So like if you want to be, wealthy you follow good money principles like you basically spend less than you earn Simple. budget yeah but it's, yeah. yeah but it's like doing stuff like that and so actually utilizing these principles to help you live a good life and and get to the things you wanted to do that makes sense though because principles can be construed a lot like character and stuff too like you know having good habits having good routines all that is like you're setting a baseline of like control and like responsibility that you take for things that you can expect. So when things are, 
either stressful or seem out of control and stuff, you have that there already. It's a good like grounding effect, right? Or anchor. And so I think, mm -hmm. yeah, they can be really beneficial. And, you know, knowing what matters to you. Also, knowing what lines you won't cross is also good. And that comes back to principles too and values, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing where like, you know, it's too far or even if you could do that and that might help you achieve something faster, it's not worth it because you'd still have, it would cause other problems, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess, I guess the next, the other thing that I've been struggling with recently is like actually knowing that I, so I know that enough is enough, but I still want more. There's still the want, Yeah, yeah. you know, like, like I have, I have a beautiful place to live and I have, you know, the food that I can eat and I have all this stuff, but it's like, I want more. And it's like, how do I be satisfied with just what I have? You know, I think. One way to do it is to ask yourself, like, like, try and ask yourself, like, what, what do you really need it for? I'll give you a concrete example, right? Like, maybe that maybe it's a whole thing. I don't know. Like, I, I love photography, but I also love like the technology of it, like cameras, lenses and stuff. And they're all like very expensive, like they're not cheap. And so but they also come out like, you know, every few years they come out with new ones and they're really cool and they have new features and stuff. And I always look at them because I'm interested in it and I think it's neat to see where it's going and all. But I also there's a part of me that also wants them. But I don't buy them because I also know, like, I have to remind myself all the time, like for what I'm doing right now, like I have exactly like I have a good setup that I can use. It's very good and fine and works for what I'm using it for. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it professionally or anything. I'm not making money from it. Like this is a perfect setup for me. It works. Eventually, if I outgrow it, that's fine. But like reminding yourself like your needs too, and in relation to like what you what you want more of. Does that make sense? Mm. That's mm -hmm. helped me because it's like, you know, I realized like even if I had it, like I wouldn't be doing more with it. I wouldn't be able to use it more. I wouldn't be doing more with it anyway. So why? Like it's really just like, you know, mm -hmm. a, a waste in that sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I look, I look at like, cause there's always, I feel like no matter what, there's always a pressing financial need. Like I'm doing, I'm doing good financially, but it's like, I feel like there's always a pressing need to make more. And I keep looking and I'm like, how many meals can you eat in a day? Like how much can you, like how much better could an apartment, be, one apartment be than another one? You know, it's just like, yeah. Well, I think that comes from though, you know, being in severe debt before, you know, being in situations where like there was that real fear that like, you know, you could go bust almost, you know, um, you know, being in situations in the past where like things have changed dramatically and like, you've had, you know, I mean, th that happens. Right. So it's like there is always that fear. And we put so much emphasis on money anyway already because it is necessary to a point. But we also put so much emphasis on it as a metric for everything that it's hard mm -hmm. not to think that way. And I think this gets back to really like what do you actually want and need in your life you know and what are you willing to give up in pursuit of it because just blatant like just you know going full force pursuing money and stuff you're going to lose loud on a lot of other things you know like hmm. that are important so you have to kind of also think of that balance yeah why can't you have it balance. all <laughs> i know right right now <laughs> uh, why no, can't you have it all it's so hard though it is like i know what you mean though too because like i I find the same project every time I sit down to like learn something. I'm like, why is why don't I know it right now? And like, you know, it gets I, I don't know. There's so many things I want to do, but I know I can't do all of them. And it's like, so it's like, you know, how do I manage my interests so that I can do the right ones? Because what if I'm choosing the wrong ones? And like, you know, it's like, it's just not easy. Not easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just, is it just a matter of balance? It's just a matter of appreciation and gratitude or like, I don't know. That's like, what I was just, that's what I was just going to say. Cause I was thinking, I think it's during, not, don't quote me on this, but I think it's during like Passover, or maybe Rosh Hashanah or something like that. But there's, there's a song called Dainu, which is like, it ba basically translates to like, or I think it maybe it's even in English. Who knows? I don't remember. But basically like <laughs> if, <laughs> If he had only taken them out of Egypt and not parted the Red Seas for him, that would be enough. Or because Dainu translates to enough. Like oh, if okay. he had only taken them out of Egypt, talking about the Jews yeah. back in the day, if he'd only taken them out of Egypt and not part of the Red Seas, that would have been enough. If he had only like done this and not this, that would have been enough. And it's just like, 
I think it, does, it probably does come down to gratitude a bit because you got to look at your life and be like, you know, if I only get to live this one day, like that's enough. Because really, I mean, if you were told right now, that, like this was your last day, don't you think you would look at it a little bit differently? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just like appreciate it a bit more and even be able to be like, you know, find stuff that you could be grateful for. Like, geez, how about all this stuff that I really wanted and then I got and all this stuff that I did and heck, I'm still walking around on my own legs. That's pretty awesome. And all this other stuff. No, I like, I actually like that one too. That's a good point. Like being grateful and, and recognizing that we're not owed anything, you know, that's part of it too. Like that, like it's, we don't necessarily, we don't, aren't owed anything. We don't deserve anything, you know? So it's like, those expectations of constantly more and more are kind of like really misguided, you know? Um, but we should be grateful for what we do get because we got it, you know? We have this life, we have this existence, we have this time to use as we want. I mean, like, we should be grateful for that. There's so much to be grateful for. And, and like, I think if you get caught in the, caught in that like never enough cycle, like, you just do waste it too because you're miserable, you're stressed, you're chasing things and never really appreciating anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think gratitude, appreciation and gratitude are so helpful. Like they really are so important and so easy not to do because it's so easy to take everything for granted, to expect it'll be there tomorrow, to expect you'll, you know what I mean? You'll like, have that stuff and just want more. <laughs> yeah, it's like, actually, that's probably a good habit to just get in the, get in the habit of start living each day as if it's your last. Because like I was listening to Marcus Aurelius again this weekend and, uh, you know, he's like, stop living like you got a thousand years to live. And then he's talking about like, he's, uh, I think he, it was like Hippocrates or whatever. The father, He was talking about how, you know, after he told all these other people how they were going to die and how to be healthy and everything, he died in, on his own. And all these <laughs> seers who predicted people's deaths and everything, and they died. And all these worldly people who were the most popular people and who wanted all this power and everything, and they died too. And I, and when I listened to that, I'm like, this guy is incredible and he's dead yeah and he also like, had i have everything. something yeah. yeah i have something now that he doesn't have yeah. called life and, you, and it's just yeah. incredible you have your opportunity your chance right now right and i think that's the other thing too like i don't know like the existentialists emphasize death a lot too and i think it's important because like if you if you really think about it you know like this is your opportunity you have this time you are alive now and so it's like a really important thing don't waste it and you can't bring anything with you like once you die you're gone so chasing all this stuff like is kind of like why what are you going to do with it if you're doing something really important for you that's great i mean like if you really value whatever you're doing that's good then do it because it's important to you it adds value to your life whatever but if you're just chasing things to fill a a gap you know it's like you're just wasting time Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really crazy like well, that's gonna be one. We were talk. We were we were talking oh, about death. We were talking about death last week, and it's like we've distanced ourselves from it so much. Like back when I was back when I was working as a vet, it like messed with my head big time because mm-hmm. especially around the Christmas season, that was euthanasia season. So I was literally like, I was literally killing dogs and cats, and they would come in, oh, and I would do something wait. to them, and then they would be dead. And they probably it, wait for like, their family to get home too, right? So they can do it together and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it was like, it still messes with my mind because I'm like, they're existing there one moment and then on some other plane of existence or maybe just gone totally the next moment. And it's like, it's that fragile. Yeah. Totally crazy. We know you're right though. We have separated ourselves from it. Think about it. Did you go to the grocery store? You don't see cows hung up. You see meat packaged in plastic. You know, it's like, it's presented in a way where it's like not even the thing. It's so strange. Mm -hmm. Like we separate Mm -hmm. ourselves from it entirely. And it's really probably like that was probably easier back in the day because people were, yes, it was hard, but like also they were just like, it was a part of life. It was part of every, you know, it was accepted in that sense. Yeah. Not to mention like you had a family of seven children out of 12, you know? (laughs) Then again, I mean, Marcus Aurelius constantly reminds himself of it and he saw it all the time. I mean, wars back then were probably like people dropping like flies. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. I, I remember them saying what was it the civil war where more people died from disease than they actually died from gunshots yeah because yeah, think about that oh, back yeah. then man you get oh my god you get like an infection or something you're done and you have mm-hmm. treatments 
yeah but yeah i mean you know it is crazy and that's the other thing too it's like you know like think of like regrets too like if, if you were dying like are you going to be upset that you don't have more money in the bank when you're dying that you can't take with you like, mm-hmm. are you going to be upset that you can't i know people are worried too like don't get me wrong i understand like planning for the future like parents or something might want to leave something behind or something for the family or whatever that's that's one thing but like are you going to be upset that you don't have a bunch of stuff to take with you because you can't take it is that really what's going to stress you out on your on your deathbed or is it going to be that you didn't do things that you enjoyed or that you didn't appreciate things more that you didn't see people you love you know whatever Mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah i mean like kind of structuring your life even around like all the shitty stuff because people are always going to have parts of their life that's no fun and jobs that they hate but like structuring your life around that to where you can still have things that you enjoy that make it enough yeah Hmm. that does make sense well you know we also i think we live in this time too that's hard because it's like you know like it's consumerism right there's always something at a higher level like I can go get a, I can go afford a car, but there's always a car that costs more that has better interior, better things. I can go eat a meal and that'll satisfy my hunger, but there's always a, a fancier restaurant, a Michelin star or whatever, where you can spend tons of money on something, right? Like I can go get a shirt and wear it and that covers me and it protects me against the cold, or I can go get a designer shirt for thousands of, you know, it's like, there's always going to be that next level because the way we live and it's like, do you need that? Is that even necessary? Is that even what you, is that what you want to worry about? Is that really going to make your life better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a different answer for everyone. It is. But I mean, you know, I think, Mm -hmm. but I think to some extent that the more you, there is diminishing returns though, too, where like something satisfies a need or a purpose and adding, you know, to that doesn't necessarily increase value in the same way, you know? Yeah. Well, for James Bond, the world is not enough. No, it's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a great game on uh, 64. That yeah, was like one of the 64. best games ever made, I think. Ever. That was enough. I if wish they had just yeah, made was. GoldenEye 007 and never made Halo, that was enough. <laughs> I wish they, you know, it's funny that that, that was so cool having the four person playing in the same console thing i wish they did that still but they don't Mm -hmm. that was great that's so fun yeah yeah Yeah, so i you got a good point with gratitude and just figuring out the stuff that does make it worthwhile you know i feel like i feel like i'm breathing easier now that we've talked about this you know and also just be easier on yourself because you know you're gonna get back in this loop again anyway it happens to all of us like you know it's gonna happen Mm -hmm. And I think it's yeah. it's there's probably so many factors involved that you just have to like be easy on yourself too, you know. Mm-hmm. Bingo. So anything else? How to be fulfilled with enough? How to be satisfied with enough? All right. Keep trying because well, maybe we'll get there. <laughs> I know, right? You never know. It could be the next thing. But I think it. Is, I think it does come down to just being satisfied right now. Yeah. 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 Maybe cool. you can keep reminding yourself that you are too, right? I know whether you know it or not, you already <laughs> have enough. Whether you know it or not, because you have everything you need for right now. Yeah. It's like that thing: give us this day our daily bread. You get manna from heaven every day, but don't take cool. more than you need. Exactly, because it goes rotten. Yeah, and I read that. <laughs> All right. Well, before we mumble any longer, uh, Good there you have it. There you have it. How to be satisfied with enough. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.